your approach for the score of the film? Well, since that wasn't gonna work. <laughs> okay, oh. Oh, dude. May I with the camera? It's, uh, really? Oh, good. Okay. I'm so excited. That's not on, is no, it? No, no, no. Okay. I guess he just, ha like, always had it in his mind, like, since he, you know, was writing it, that he wanted me to do the music for it. Spike and I both really, <laughs> really liked Maurice's book. And I guess, um, he's always seen something in my music that had a sort of childlike essence or innocence about it. It's very much like the movie in that, like, she's very in touch with childhood and, like, when she is creative, she's so like a kid. It's just so fully absorbed, excited. Yeah, maybe, again, maybe even some uh, howls, like, arr, 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 okay. or something like that, you know? That sounds good. being Jem one of the first big things I learned is if you put music on something, you're telling the audience it's important. And just the choice of music or not music, let alone what, what kind of music. Though you've always been the one. I went to her studio and listened to a bunch of stuff. And that, this was when I first got back from Australia. And then a couple days later, she came in and we played it for Eric and we watched, put it up against picture. And, even, even, even more so, we put the song, The Worried Shoes, which is a Daniel Johnston cover, up against this scene where the Wild Things are angry at Max because he had this idea for the Dirk Cloud fight that ended up hurting everybody and up getting everyone mad at each other, and now they're going to, you know, they're taking out on him. Carol! As soon as we put the music on, there's a shot where it's a wide shot, and Max is like this little figure in his wolf suit, and he's really cold. It just was perfect, and I, I completely started crying <laughs> when I heard it and, saw, and watched it to picture. And, and that was her first pass. She went in, and in like nine days, she did eight songs. Yeah, that's just, um, it's just, Maha, I worry shoes. That's what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> Well, the reason why we wanted the kids was because um, even before we started writing music for this uh, movie, uh, that Langley School <laughs> record was was it was just a huge influence. It was basically inspired by Langley Music School project that you gave me that CD, and that must have been like six years ago. You know, Langley is basically it's a you know just a public school. It's like probably you know fifth graders singing in a gymnasium, all the, like David Bowie songs, and this sort of cool music teacher in the '70s decided he didn't want to teach these kids like whatever the kids' songs were that he was giving as his sort of what you were supposed to teach kids. And, kid, and, he, and he, he wrote in the liner notes that kids didn't really like them either. The idea of having a kids' choir, you know, and especially just untrained kids, was just really appealing because we thought it would just add a, a certain kind of magic to the music, you know, which already was kind of written like it was for a kid anyway. We're going to start with... Uh... All this love, is that right? Me and Karen got there a little late after they were already like setting the kids up. This woman was trying to like get them to like sing everything perfectly and like, Just sing it but like it was fun. so stressing me out. Just um, it's go sun, big beast, holds in history. So she was there to coordinate the musicians and kids, and since we didn't have a conductor, you know, she was sort of um, you know, getting the kids set up and warming them up but she was sort of overwarming them. Like, we didn't want them to be warmed up really, we just wanted them to be like kids. Okay, I'm hearing a couple of little notes that aren't quite with everybody else. And we stopped doing it just like sections of it, we just like, you know, did it this whole thing and like, just got them to have fun with it and it was amazing. Whoa! 